uh, had a brother over there on Instagram and he, he messaged me and he uh, attached or sent me a link to a video that was posted on Instagram, an Instagram post by Dr. Dr. Jim Sapani. Um, is he an endocrinologist? I doubt that. Is he a urologist? I doubt that. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that he's a doctor of something like uh, biomechanics or exercise physiology or kinesiology or one of these kind of things. I'm going to, I'm going to say that's what he probably does. Um, and that doesn't even, that's neither here nor there, you know, congratulations to him. That's awesome. But in my world, as far as that small, you know, slice of my life, right? Cause it's not the be all end all it doesn't define who I am, believe it or not, but it's primarily what this channel is about is that the muscle, the hypertrophy, the bodybuilding, or the lifting of the weights, all that bullshit, right? The nutrition, all that crap. That slice of my life, you know, that, that one part of a multifaceted life, that uh, doesn't, uh, that, that my paradigm wouldn't include a guy like that. It just wouldn't, because what would I, what do I watch these guys for? Why would I watch any of these guys? And why, you know, for entertainment, um, if I know them, something like that. You know what I mean? I, I, I'll watch things for, I might be curious about what various guys that I looked at as I was coming up. And I did learn things from as far as uh, training regimens and form and various exercises and routines and things. You know, guys like uh, Dorian Yates, Jay Cutler, you know, um, Jose Raymond. I know Jose, you know, very well. So I'm always interested in what Jose has to say. So these are guys that, you know, but a guy like this other fellow, um, you know, all the things that I train for, I already have in speeds. And I'm 60. So I'm already well past this guy's age. What's he going to be at 60? I don't know. Hopefully he's going to be in outstanding condition, blah, blah, blah. But I already am in outstanding condition for 60, still very muscular, still very strong, fully functioning. Um, you know, I'm interested in where the rubber meets the road, where the bullet meets the bone. You know, I'm interested in boots on the ground, practical application type of shit. Not interested in theoretical stuff, not interested in somebody can read a study or somebody can read a paper and then just spit it back to me. I don't have, I have no use for that. Zero, none, absolutely none. Because ultimately, no matter what they discover, and it's always changing or what they believe or what they think or what their understanding currently is, whether it remains the same or not in the next 10 years, which it probably will not, it'll be different then, you know. Um, ultimately, none of that amounts to a hill of beans. Doesn't mean jack shit until you try it yourself and you and if you can successfully apply it and it contributes something positive in your life it works for you it brings something to the table that you can directly benefit from in your everyday life that you can utilize and not everybody's the same right two guys two men can go out into a field together and um breezy spring day one guy tomorrow now, you know, he has all kinds of symptoms of allergies and, you know, sinus issues and his eyes are red and itchy and all this other shit. Other guy has no problems whatsoever, but yet they're both the same organism. They're both human beings. They were both standing in the same field. They were both breathing in the same atmosphere. It's all about receptors. It's, it's all about genetics. It's all about genetics. Um, creatine. Tons of research demonstrating that, oh, it's a supplement that works. Okay, I agree with that. It is a supplement that works. But it's never really brought enough to the table for me to even bother to include it. Never been a creatine guy. Not every single person responds to creatine. Not every single person adds creatine and says, damn, that's a worthwhile supplement for me. For me, it never has been. Until very recently. You know, now that Dr. Jeff Galini, who else? You know? creates another outstanding fucking product supplement in that cray alkaline over at efx and it's patented you know 
and it's patented. That's a game changer. So now I do use that and it's a whole different animal than any of the creatine that I've ever tried up to this point, ever. So there's value in that. It brings something to the table. It's not like a placebo. I don't just take it blindly like a sheep because everybody else does. Hey, it just doesn't, doesn't do it for me what it does for you, and, you know, typically. And that's just how the, the cookie crumbles. It's just, what the, it's just how life goes. You know? So you find out what works for you, and that's what you keep. But if it doesn't work for you, then what the fuck is it worth? It's not worth anything. You know, why keep it around if it doesn't earn its own inclusion? So we're all individuals. Um, something that works for one person may not work for another person. But this, this whole uh, L-arginine versus L-citrulline thing. First, uh, let me say about L-citrulline now, they've got citrulline malate now. So popular and trendy, it's another fad thing. Malate, citrulline malate. I uh, gave it a fair shake. You know what citrulline malate equates to to me? Snake oil. Uh, waste of money, get less citrulline for your money, spend the same money or more money and get less citrulline, get less L-citrulline because of the inclusion of the malate, like malate, like two to one ratio or whatever it might be. It's, it doesn't do jack shit. Now there's tons of research, or not tons, but there's enough research, there's studies. Oh, you'll get that extra rep or two, or you're going to exercise longer and harder. Bullshit, I didn't see that. I exercise pretty long and pretty hard. I'm already pretty. And it doesn't bring anything to the table. To me, I cursed the whole tub of it until it was gone. Kicked myself in the ass the whole time that I even tried it. When, you know, just straight up L-citrulline has always done what I needed to do. But the L-arginine is a special thing to me because the L-arginine, like I said, it brings in so many additional benefits that I'm interested in as an older guy, tons that L-citrulline doesn't, doesn't even have the capability of offering as far as we understand it, as far as our current knowledge, you know, uh, exposes or demonstrates. So if you look at the pathways, it can get very convoluted and complicated. And I understand why people say some of the incorrect things that they say, because it's not technically incorrect. There are different pathways, okay? These amino acids, this is not the only thing that they do is, is uh, in the interest of vasodilation or just enhance your pump. And so the facts are when L-citrulline is utilized to enhance your pump or vasodilate, uh, to generate the production of nitric oxide, L-citrulline is actually converted to L-arginine. Then the L-arginine is directly uh, the engine that produces nitric oxide, uh, converted to nitric oxide. So that's the direct precursor, L-arginine. So the only issue that comes in with L-arginine is that, like everything else, it's not just this is, it occurs in a vacuum, this happens across the board. As you get older, our ability to assimilate and to utilize in the process and, um, you know, we become less efficient at metabolizing and absorbing various nutrients, including proteins, including amino acids, and including L-arginine. Uh, there are so many, if you look at the pathways that these two amino acids are chiefly involved within the urea pathway, which is a whole separate pathway, and the nitric oxide pathway, just in those two alone, there's a whole plethora of enzymes involved, a whole bunch. So, allegedly, um, the requisite enzyme that is produced or generated in our endothelial layer of our blood vessels or arteries, um, its ability to generate that, this particular enzyme that's critical for the uptake of the L-arginine, that decreases as we age drastically. Okay, so they generally say, well, guys over 40, now here's the jump they make. Oh, guys over 40 can't utilize L-arginine anymore because we don't make this. That's not what the research says. That's not factually what happens. That's not what happens. It's not like you're 39 one day and, oh, L-arginine is gangbusters. It's awesome. It's great. Now you turn 40 tomorrow. Oh, shit, now I'm 40. I can't absorb it. I can't utilize it and generate um, the requisite, the prerequisite uh, enzyme to be able to create the nitric oxide. Well, 
Apparently, you still somehow you do because the L-citrulline has to turn into L-arginine, then the L-arginine, right? But here's another thing you have to consider. Uh, a lot of these things are to bowel tolerance in the form in which that we consume them, right? So L-arginine, you can only consume so much L-arginine, you know, in powdered form or whatever form that we can get it and utilize it, right? L-arginine powder. If you, if you try to intake too much of that, it's to bowel tolerance. You're going to be sitting on the commode blowing your guts out. Absolutely. Then how much of that do you think you absorbed? None probably. Very, very little. Right? Whereas L-citrulline, not so much. I routinely take 20 grams of L-citrulline. Routinely. Not malate. That's fucking waste. You know, 20 grams of L-citrulline, whereas I will only take Generally, I would take 10 to 12 grams tops of L-arginine. Tops! You know, so now as I've gotten older, so what I'm saying is most likely all of these enzymes are diminished. However, you're, you're able to take so much L-citrulline orally that that makes up for it. You know, if I'm taking, you know, if I, if I take pre-workout now, what I take pre-workout is 5 grams of L-arginine. I will always take L-arginine because it keeps, the, it keeps the plaque down. It clears the plaque away. It does tons and tons, tons of stuff. So if I take 5 grams of L-arginine pre-workout and I take, shit, 15, 20 grams of L-citrulline pre-workout, if I took 10 grams of L-arginine, is that L-citrulline, that 20 grams, twice as much of L-citrulline, is that giving me twice the bang? No. No. But out of an overabundance of caution, since I get up in the morning and I take first thing in the morning empty stomach every morning, I drink a, a big shaker of water, and the only thing in that water is 5 grams of L-arginine and um, 500 milligrams of Tudka. First thing every morning. That's every morning. Then on training days in the early evening, late afternoon, whatever, I will pre-workout another 5 grams of L-arginine and 10 to 20 grams or whatever of L-citrulline. See what I'm saying? So you can consume so much more L-citrulline. So when people make statements like, well, L-citrulline is twice as potent, and you know, come on, you're able to take twice as much easily, at least, or more. So that could offset any diminishing production of the, the, the requisite enzymes that are involved. And again, the L-citrulline, even if somebody makes the argument, well, we, you, you don't produce enough of the enzymes, so you can't really absorb the L-arginine. Well, brother, you're still taking L-citrulline as a remedy to that, but the L-citrulline is still turning into L-arginine then to nitric oxide. So either way, you are still metabolizing and, and making use of, end result, L-arginine to generate the production of nitric oxide. You know, so yeah, maybe there's a get around or whatever. Like I said, it's kind of complicated. But I understand where people say things like, well, uh, L-arginine turns into L-citrulline, and L-citrulline is the direct precursor. That's not entirely wrong, but it is wrong if you're considering in regards to your pump or vasodilation or that thing. The nitric oxide pathway is a separate pathway. You know, it's not like you take L-arginine or you take L-citrulline and it only goes this one route. No, it goes where it's needed, where it's needed. And there's another pathway running alongside of that, and that is the urea pathway. And in, in that instance, L-arginine can become L-citrulline. And yes, on the other pathway, L-citrulline becomes L-arginine. So they can, your body can take and, and, and formulate either out of the other, you know, depending on what it needs and what we're trying to accomplish, what the body's trying to do. But because when I'm supplementing pre-workout with uh, L-arginine and the citrulline, L-citrulline, I'm taking it in the interest of vasodilation and, 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 and an increased and enhanced pump, and it's always worked, like gangbusters. Like gangbusters. It used to be just strictly L-arginine, I would take more of it, pre-workout, but now I take it twice a day on training days. Anyway, every morning I take it, 
and then on training days, I still take a pre-workout, but not only take it five grams pre-workout. So I'm still ingesting total 10 grams of L-arginine uh, throughout the day between the morning and pre-workout if it's a training day. On non-training days, it's five grams in the morning. On non-training days, I do not ingest L-citrulline at all. You know, so ultimately, and this is where people get confused. This is where the sophistry comes in. You know, because people mix and match different components of information along these processes that uh, involve these two pathways. And there's more to it than just that. But that's just an interest of the urea pathway or the, because it's kind of, uh, or the nitric oxide pathway because it's like an endless loop. It doesn't last long and the body makes of whatever you put into it what it needs one into the other, whatever, right? But nitric oxide pathway, L-arginine is the direct precursor. Uh, in older men, sure, take some L-citrulline along with it pre-workout, but I wouldn't get rid of that, that L-arginine because L-arginine brings too much other stuff to the table. Way, way too much other stuff that has nothing to do with the workout itself. But with longevity, with functionality, with just overall health and well-being, that l citrulline does it, you know, but it wouldn't surprise me if come to find out, I'm sure that elsewhere in these other processes, the body can make of l citrulline into L-arginine for that as well, or back and forth or whatever. So you're going to be okay. But my recommendation is you try it yourself because ultimately that's where the rubber meets the road, the bullet meets the bone. That's the proving grounds. That's where the proof is in the pudding. Try it yourself and see what works for you because we're individuals, just like two people can stand in the same field and one suffer from allergies the next day from the pollen that they both just breathed in and the other guy have no negative experience at all or symptoms from it. It's all about receptors and sensitivity and all this other bullshit. So I would try it for myself and then Find out which works best for you or how it works for you. The L-arginine I would include somewhere every day because it does bring so much to the table. Uh, more than we could get in into the scope of this video because I'd be here an hour. And if you really want really good information still, if you're still one of these people that wants more information, even though it's not, it might not matter because if you go to utilize whatever and it doesn't do it for you, then what was any of that worth? Right? It either works or it doesn't work. Ultimately, that's the test. That's the test it has to meet. Uh, but if you really want more information, don't look for people like me or don't look. For, I mean, as far as pump and shit, yeah, I know very well because I got over 20 inch arms, half for I don't know how freaking long. And, and, and I get some of the biggest pumps I've ever seen and I've been trained with a lot of people and, and they know it too. You know, and it's through my practice and what I've developed is what I intake pre-workout. Absolutely. I manipulate my own insulin production and that's how it works. You know, with the carbolin and the L-arginine, et cetera, et cetera. Now I do add L-citrulline, but in a large amount. But if you really want factual, good information, you need to look toward urologists and people like this, the medical community, those people that are making videos. Not bodybuilding, not that shit. You know, that's going to be more clearly explained and better explained. And I would put more faith into the technical details coming from someone like that. Absolutely. But I'm not going to bullshit you. I would put more faith in the testimony of my experiences. If you're trying to get big and you're trying to get pumped, I wouldn't be looking at a guy with 16 inch arms to be the authority on how to generate the fucking most skin splitting pumps. You know, I'm sure he has something to say about it that's worthwhile. But then you look at a guy with 20 plus inch arms, even when they're smaller, still over 20. And he gets, you know, at that size, gets like mad pumps, huge, ridiculous pumps. That guy can probably tell you something about stimulating nitric oxide production in that interest.